In the previous video, we identified clusters or tissue substances in a healthy brain image. It would be really helpful if we can use these clusters to automatically detect tumors in MRI images of sick patients. The tumor.csv file corresponds to an MRI brain image of a patient with oligodendroglioma, a tumor that commonly occurs in the front lobe of the brain. Since brain biopsy is the only definite diagnosis of this tumor, MRI guidance is key in determining its location and geometry. Now make sure that the tumor.csv file is in your current directory. Let's go to the console and clear it, and then read the data and save it to a data frame that we're going to call tumor, and use the read.csv function, which takes as an input the tumor data set, and make sure to turn off the header using header equals false. And let's quickly create our tumor matrix using the as.matrix function over the tumor data frame and the tumor vector using the as.vector function over the tumor matrix. Now we will not run the k-means algorithm again on the tumor vector. Instead, we will apply the k-means clustering results that we found using the healthy brain image on the tumor vector. In other words, we treat the healthy vector as a training set and the tumor vector as a testing set. To do this, we first need to install a new package that is called FlexClust. So let us type install.packages and then in between quotations, FlexClust. And then the first thing R will ask us to uh, set the region that is closest to our geographical location. And after that, press OK and the installation shouldn't take more than two seconds to complete. Okay, now that the package is installed, let us load it by typing library in parentheses FlexClust. The FlexClust package contains the object class KCCA, which stands for k centroids Cluster Analysis. We need to convert the information from the clustering algorithm to an object of the class KCCA. And this conversion is needed before we can use the predict function on the test set tumor vector. So, calling our new variable kmc.kcca and then using the as.kcca function, which takes as a first input the original kmc variable that stored all the information from the k-means clustering function, and the second input is the data that we clustered. And in this case, it's the training set, which is the healthy vector. And now be aware that this data conversion will take some time to run. Now that R finally finished creating the object kmc.kcca, we can cluster the pixels and the tumor vector using the predict function. Let us call the cluster vector tumor clusters, and that would be equal to predict. And the first input is this new object kmc.kcca, and the second input is the test data. So let's type new data equals tumor vector. And now the tumor clusters is a vector that assigns a value 1 through 5 to each of the intensity values in the tumor vector as predicted by the k-means algorithm. To output the segmented image, we first need to convert the tumor clusters to a matrix. So let's use the dimension function. And then the input is simply tumor clusters. And then using the C function with the first input as the number of rows in the tumor matrix. And the second input as the number of columns in the tumor matrix. And now we can visualize the clusters by using the image function with the input tumor clusters matrix. And make sure to set the axes to false. And let's use again these uh, fancy rainbow colors here. So colors equal rainbow with the input k, again k is equal to 5. All right, let's navigate to the graphics window now to see if we can detect the tumor. Oh, and yes, we do. It is this abnormal substance here that is highlighted in blue that was not present in the healthy MRI image. So we were successfully able to identify more or less the geometry of the malignant structure. 
We see that we did a good job capturing the major tissue substances of the brain. The gray matter is highlighted in purple and the white matter in yellow. For the sick patient, the substance highlighted in blue is the oligodendroglioma tumor. Notice that we do not see substantial blue regions in the healthy brain image apart from the region around the eyes. Actually, looking at the eyes regions, we notice that the two images were not taken precisely at the same section of the brain. This might explain some differences in shapes between the two images. Let's see how the images looked like originally. We see that the tumor region has a lighter color intensity, which is very similar to the region around the eyes in the healthy brain image. This might explain highlighting this region in blue. Of course we cannot claim that we did a wonderful job obtaining the exact geometries of all the tissue substances, but we are definitely on the right track. In fact, to do so, we need to use more advanced algorithms and fine-tune our clustering technique. MRI image segmentation is an ongoing field of research. While k-means clustering is a good starting point, more advanced techniques have been proposed in the literature, such as the modified fuzzy k-means clustering method. Also, if you are interested, R has packages that are specialized for analyzing medical images. Now if we had MRI axial images taken at different sections of the brain, we could segment each image and capture the geometries of the substances at different levels. Then, by interpolating between the segmented images, we can estimate the missing slices. And we can then obtain a 3D reconstruction of the anatomy of the brain from 2D MRI cross-sections. In fact, 3D reconstruction is particularly important in the medical field for diagnosis, surgical planning, and biological research purposes. I hope that this recitation gave you a flavor of this fascinating field of image segmentation. In our next video, we will review all the analytics tools we have covered so far in this class and discuss their uses, pros, and cons.